Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I recently just did an Instagram live tutorial using Adobe Illustrator and my tablet to create an illustration in like 40 minutes. A lot of people said that they wanted to see a YouTube video of it with a bit more detail. So here we are, we've got to give the people what they want. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your own illustration using Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to be using my Huon tablet with my pen, which I'm going to put in the link description below of how to get it. But yeah, so let's get going. So as you can see in this bit, we've got our illustration. I'm just going to make sure I lock the illustration down, so make sure you do that if you don't want that to move. Head over to my pencil tool. So with my pencil tool, I just want to make sure I have all these selected. So now that I've selected those, I'm just going to zoom in and literally start going in. So because I chose fill new pencil strokes, that means when I am outlining something, it literally fills it in all the way around. So as I'm going around the hair and then when I eventually come back up, you're gonna see that it's like joining into that part. And I just wanna, you just wanna make sure that you're always doing that. So as you can see there, it's white, um, but let's make it black. So it's a so just dragging it to the end. And it does this sometimes, you just gotta click it again, just make sure, drag it all the way to the end. So obviously click it and then there we go, that's better. So now that we've done that side, I'm going to go back in and we're going to do the other side of her hair. So as you can see, I'm not going into too much detail, just because that's not really what I want this illustration to be looking at. I just literally want it to be very simple and um, give it that kind of like simple silhouette look. So literally we're going to do the same thing, go around the hair. Using a tablet makes things a lot easier just because you've got that sensitivity and that pressure there as well. And voila, there we go. We've got her that bit, top bit of her hair done. So as you can see, we can see the other black bits of hair. So I'm going to go around that as well. Making it quite simple yet again. But it's great using the tablet, honestly, because the pressure sensitivity changes the whole game of this thing. So that is her hair done. So on to the next part, I'm going to go in on her co-ord, the crop top part, the bralette top, whatever you want to call it. So again, going around it carefully um, and making sure you kind of get them, those detailed parts. Um, I like to make my illustrations simple but detailed. So we've got this little bit here done. I'm going to kind of split it into parts just to make it a little bit easier. And then now the other part of her co ord as you can see, I have split it into two just to make it a bit easier for everyone. So now that we're kind of done with the chest area, um, I'm going to go into this bit that's hanging at the front, whatever this tying thing is. So going around it, and a lot of the time with illustration, it's kind of just... It's quite simple when you think about it in a way of just drawing what your eyes see. What do your eyes see? So we've got these um, rope parts. So literally, I'm not being too specific yet again, but we know that we've got this bit hanging down. So just making it look like we've got things hanging down that could be tying the top. So that's what I'm going to do here. Please ignore the little emails that are coming through. Um, so now I'm going to do her trousers and I'm going to keep the filling to be black and I know it's going to cover the dangly parts but we will eventually change the colour of that. I'm not too fussed about how straight the bottom is but we're just going to make sure we get that outline of the trousers so that we know what it is. So there we go, we've got that and that again should fill it in black and again it's going to hide the dangly bits. So then I move on to the layer panel, just want to make sure I create a new layer, which is going to go underneath. So this new layer is going to be her skin, so I'm going to draw it out. There we go. Remember the ends don't matter too much. And then I'm going to come back up, and as you can see, we can kind of go around the clothing, just because that's not going to be seen because it's underneath. 
So that's one great thing about Illustrator, you can kind of manipulate things in a way, especially with the layers. So there we go, same thing, and I know it's black, but we're going to change that later on. But it kind of looks like a top, doesn't it? Oh. So now I'm going to go into her stomach. So as I said before, don't worry too much about that area because that the cloth is going to sit on top of it. So no one is going to see um, that layer there. So there we go, we've got the stomach done. I've kept it the same colour because we are going to change it later. And I'm going to go and do the same thing with her chest area. Just making sure it's back on the pencil tool because a lot of the times we start to do something and it's actually not on the right tool. So yeah, again, literally the same thing and we're going to go around and do that for her chest. And like I said, this little bit that's going to actually, the top is actually going to sit on top of. It doesn't matter how neat it is because we're not going to see that because the top is literally going to sit on top of it. So there we go, just making sure that we've got that outline as well of her chin. And there we go, voila! Next thing that we want to do now is we want to check the layers. So we've got our layers there, as you can see. It's good to play around with the eye tool just to see what can appear, what cannot appear. Just making sure that everything is in the right layer. We've got all the bits there. So I'll go back into my layer. I just changed the names of the layers just so that I know what it is, especially because I've made it all black. So you just want to make sure you've got that and be quite specific with it as well. Even if it's eyes, nose, lips, mouth. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it face. So for this section, I'm going to make sure that we have the face layer highlighted. So we work on that. And if you notice, in the on the left-hand corner, my colour palette, I've switched it using that arrow, um, arrow that has the two sides. So that means that now this is going to come out as an outline rather than a fill. So as you can see, I'm going around the ear. And we're going to go, I'm going to show you guys all the way to the end. And remember this part is going to be hidden by the neck. So we don't have to worry too much about that because we've made like a really perfect outline just there when we did the neck part. So once I go around that, I just want to use the eyedropper tool. And as you can see here, I use the eyedropper tool just to do a bit of test of colour just to see what her skin tone was looking like. So it gave me a bit of a brownie, but that's fine. So next I'm going to make sure that I create a new layer which is going to sit above the face because we're going to do the features and when we do colour in the face we're going to want to make sure that the features appear above the colour so that's why we're going to put that above there. As you can see the colour palette shows a question mark which shows no colour so sometimes you just got to do a bit of tweaking because it keeps the same setting as beforehand. So I've gone back to my pencil tool just make sure it's on the right layer because as you can see I was on the wrong layer as well. And now you can see that's brown. We're just going to change that to black. So like I said, sometimes it change, it keeps it to the same setting that it was beforehand. So you just want to make sure that you go back and correct those. So just keep make sure that all my settings are correct. And we're going to go around the eyebrow now. So as you can see, just trying to get that curvature as well on the eyebrow. And just elongate it at the end as well. Sometimes you might have to rework back into it, which is fine. That happens to me a lot of the time, as you can see. So now as I do the other eyebrow, I don't have to go all the way to the end because remember that's not going to be seen, that's going to be covered by the hair. And why make more work for ourselves? We want to keep this simple. So I've gone back into it again because I just didn't like it the first time. So yeah, this might take you a couple of tries, but no worries. And now we're going to focus on the lips, so I'm going to start with the bottom lip and again as much as we're being simple just making sure you get that a bit of curvature there as well and then I'm going to keep that black for now as well and then onto the top lip as well and don't worry necessarily about overlapping for now so yeah literally exactly the same thing and again getting that like dip in there as well just to make it pop. Remember, I'm using a graphic tablet, so this might be a little bit easier on my end. But now we're going to go onto the eye. So I, this is a new technique that I was trying, actually. As you can see, I'm, my, I'm hovering a little bit because I'm trying to think of what to do. But I decided to just focus on the black and almost make it of a silhouette. So bring the, um, what do you call it, the pupil and the eyelash all into one. And I've seen that before on some illustrations. So I just wanted to experiment with that as well. And I really like the way it came out. So literally the same thing on the other eye.
So now I'm going to do the area that they call the waterline. You know where you put your eyeliner? Sometimes, not anymore. But so instead of just drawing a line, I'm actually going to um, fill it in just so that it creates a bit more depth to it. And I think that's the beauty about being able to fill it in rather than just drawing a line. It's also okay if you don't get it right the first time. Honestly, this is ex about experimenting. When I was creating this illustration, I was experimenting just at the same time. So just if it takes you more than once, that's fine. Just keep going back. Eh? Remember, practice makes perfect. Now we're going on to the nose. Again, I'm not going to make this so detailed. Literally just going to outline her nostrils. And as you can see, again, it does the filling in, which is beautiful. Remember, they don't have to be exactly the same size because honestly, it is not that deep unless you're making like a fully custom illustration. You want it to look exactly like that. But again, I'm just focusing on the bit that you can really tell makes up the nose. So the nostrils and just the line outside just to give it a bit more shape. This bit that I'm going to do now doesn't have to be done, but I'm just doing it just because it's already quite simple. So just to give it a bit more depth, as I've been saying before, into the face. Next onto the teeth. Honestly, I always struggle with the teeth. Why is it always the teeth? But as you can see, I'm trying to do the outline and I've missed a tooth for some reason. So ignore that, but I've gone over it again. And I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. So literally just focusing on the outline and not going too much into the individual's teeth and just creating that outline. And again, this part is not going to be seen because the lip is going to be on top. Now, I've realised that I've done a little bit of a mistake. So the hair is now in the same layer as the clothes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it and I'm going to create a new layer and paste it. So what you can actually do with Adobe is, as you can see, I create my new layer. I go into edit and I click paste in place, which means that it will paste in the exact same place that it originally was cut from. You might have noticed already that the outline of the face has gone and that is because it was in the wrong layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the outline once again. So here we go. I'm going to do the outline really quick because it's just going to fit in because we've got the shape from the hair and the neck. So I'm just going to make sure that that's in the right layer. And then I'm literally going to do the ears separately as well, because before it was all together as one. So I'm going to zoom in into the ears and I'm going to make the earrings quite small. I'm going to try and keep it to about around the same size of what it actually is. Obviously going to have to make up the ends a little bit, but that is fine. Imagine it's going into her hair and that's why it stops there. Same thing on the other side. Don't worry if they're not perfect. Earrings can hang whatever way it doesn't really matter now as you can see doing that there let's zoom out a little bit as you can see her whole body is black we need to make sure that we're getting her skin tone so what i'm going to do now is literally use the eyedropper tool and make it around the same skin tone that i think matches so i think that one there matches and i'm going to do the same thing for her stomach it's going to be this same tone we're going to do the same thing for her arms as well so command shift so the highlights in the arms and using the eyedropper tool to pick the exact same tone as the stomach. So because I'm now going to work on top of the face by creating the shadows, I'm going to make a layer that's just going to be above that. So it doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's above the face layer, um, but underneath the features. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the darker areas first. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to select the darker area. So that's the bit that we're going to focus on. So we're just going to grab my eyedropper tool and then just select what that tone is. Going to make it a little bit darker. There we go. So I'm going to start doing this from her chin area. So literally just drawing what I can physically see. So that's kind of the darker area there. I remember the bit underneath doesn't necessarily count because it won't show. But as you can see there, it does show. And that's because it means that that shadow layer is above her skin layer. So you just want to make sure you drag that down as so. There you go. And just put it there. So that's my layer 10. Um, and that's gone underneath the skin. So then we're going to carry on. So there we go underneath the lip. And as you can see, it's gone above, which means that we're in the wrong layer again. So yeah, this is something that you might have to keep tweaking because Illustrator does this thing that it kind of goes based, it kind of just does this. 
and it can get really frustrating especially if you don't understand your layers so now I just want to highlight all my features because they're clearly all in a different layer so as you can see I highlight it it's in layer one which is the bottom layer and I don't want it to be on that so just highlighting all my features because I want them all to sit together there we go highlighting all and then again doing the cut and then placing it in a new layer so there you go just above the face and paste in place and everything is going to be there fine and you can kind of see it come out in the layers option so as you can see now that brown shadow has come underneath her lip and so we're going to do the same thing here with the shadow on her forehead remember you can work back into it as much as you want so I'm going to start a little bit lower So now to create a new layer, and honestly, the more layers you have, the better. It just allows you to manipulate a lot of stuff a lot easier. So there we go, my new layer. So so far, I've got twelve layers actually. So now I'm just gonna use the color palette again to kind of just get another tone. And I just wanted to be obviously be a bit lighter because this is gonna be like our mid shadow range. So obviously you can start at any point, like anywhere in the face. So obviously we've got that mid bit and I, as you can see it's come on top which means the layer needs to be underneath. So there we go, I'm going to literally do the same thing. I quite like to make them a little bit rough with this one. So there we go. And then do the same thing for the other side. And again, trying to work out what your eyes can physically see. Especially with a simple one like this, you don't want to spend too long making it the perfect shadows and next just make sure we create another layer and this is going to sit underneath again so this is not going to be the final one because this is the last of the shadows and then we're going to work on some highlights but using the color palette choosing a bit of a lighter color in the shadow range you don't want it to be too light so going underneath that eye area kind of playing around and making it rough So this area of my shadow, I think it's actually in the wrong layer. So I'm just going to select it and see where it is. And actually, as I can see, it's in that layer one. So I'm going to cut that again. And then I'm going to paste in place in my new layer, clicking on edit and then paste in place. Now for my highlighted area, I'm just going to make sure I create that new layer, click my pencil tool. Choose a bit of a lighter colour as well. We're going to go a bit more pinky. And the highlighted areas that I can really see is that brightness on her nose. And then that line that comes down in the middle as well. And for me, just around the eyebrow as well. And underneath the nose as well. So as you can see, we've got the skin colour actually of her neck and her chest. But I'm going to click that little double arrow that's in the square color section and I'm just going to make it so that the outline is the pink and um, just so that we can see because we're going to work on the shadows in this area. I don't actually know what the name for that square thing in the left hand side is but I keep calling it these different names but just know those two squares on the left hand side with the double arrow <laughs> that's what I'm referring to. So we're just going to make sure that we have another layer and this is going to sit on top of the skin so we're just going to make sure it is above the skin. So obviously the next stage now is working on the shadows of the neck. So literally I do this quite freely and freehandedly and I really like doing this the most just because with the shadows they can kind of look however you want it to look like, um, in my opinion anyway. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool to make it the same kind of tone um, as her skin. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'm not gonna change the color of this because I kind of want it to be two different tones on her chest and I'm only using three shadows and now I'm gonna do where her breast area is and that bit there as well I'm not gonna change the color right now I can do that at any point really so just her chest area I'm not gonna circulate the whole bead because remember the shadows can indicate what is actually there so you don't actually have to draw the outline of her whole breast, but it's an indication that it's her chest. And I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool and lighten up the area. Um, yeah, I'm going to make this a sort of baby pink as we had in the highlighted area. And then use the double arrow thing. And as you can see, the shadow is hidden, which means we need to switch up the layers again. So again, cut, and then we're going to edit in place. And I'm going to do the same thing with those other shadows as well. So now onto the arms. So again, I'm going to use that double arrow on the left hand side and I'm going to switch it around. And the outline is actually called the stroke. So now the stroke is going to be that skin color because we've swapped it around. And again, I'm literally going to do the same thing that I did on the face, and we're going to create that shadow again. Now I'm going to move on to the other arm. So again, double arrow, swap it around because we want the fill to be empty, because we're going to work into that now, just so we can see. So again, I'm going to do the shadow. Don't really like that one, so I'm going to do it again. And then there we go. I'm then going to use the eyedropper tool to kind of select what colour I want that to be. So kind of just experimenting and seeing what works best. Feel free to do whatever colour that you like. For this part, because the stomach and the chest are obviously in the same layer as skin, you want to make sure that the shadows that you're going to do on the stomach are on the same layer as the shadows that are for the chest and for the arms. It can get very easy to mistake this just because I do this a lot all the time just because these are different sections but lo and behold it is all in that same layer. Now using the eyedropper tool. So now for the rope part of her top. So as you can see that is black and I'm going to select them all individually and I'm just, just going to change the colour of them. going to make them a bit of a creamy colour instead just to see what that looks like. You don't have to do what I'm doing right now, but I just thought just for them to stand out a bit, I just wanted to make them a different colour. So the rope is being hidden by the trousers, and this is actually on the same layer. So what I'm going to do is instead of making a new layer, we're going to sort out the arrangement. So we can actually send that backwards, and all we've got to do is right click. So now we highlight. I highlight the trousers and the actual bit that I want to bring to the front. So instead of highlighting them all, I highlight them individually. So just make sure command shift so that you're clicking both the trouser and that piece of object that you want to work with so again highlighting the area and the rope and then send them backwards sometimes it doesn't necessarily work all the time so you can always try and bring it to the front so that has worked there this is for me a quite a bit of a trial and error type of vibe so just keep doing that and you'll be fine now back onto the stomach we just want to fill the area because remember we made it into an outline just so that we could see the shadow so I'm struggling to find the area, but that's fine. There we go, we've got it. And as you can see, click the double arrow and we've got the skin tone. And the same thing with the arm as well that I'm doing. Now I'm moving on to the ears and this can feel a bit tricky. So if you notice, my shadows are actually in the wrong layer than the layer of ears. So I want to move them so that they can sit on top of the ears because when I fill in the ears, they're gonna be hidden. So I'm literally doing the same thing that I've done before where I'm gonna cut it and then I'm going to paste into place. So there we go. And we're going to create a new layer. And that's going to, that can be on top of face. That can be underneath face, but the face is, is not actually going to block it. So we're going to do the same thing where we're going to paste it into place into that new layer. So that when we fill it in, as you can see, we're not actually going to cover it. So there we go. I do the same thing with the ear. And there you go. You can see that little bit of a shadow as well. And it removes the black outline because I always used to draw with black outline and I just wanted to start 
experimenting and just making things a bit different to my work. Obviously, feel free to play around and change the colour, especially with the ears, because sometimes with the ears it might get a bit more light, a bit less light, so they don't necessarily need to be the exact same colour as your face because of how light hits. And as you can see, obviously there's a shadow behind her, so there's obviously quite a strong light in front of her. So don't worry too much about that. And now we're going to work on the face. And as you can see, when I fill in the face, it covers all the shadows, which means that the face needs to go behind the shadows just like that. So with the layers, it can get very complicated. But honestly, once you understand the principle of just having the layers and having things need to be on top of each other and below each other, things will become a lot easier for you. So now I'm going to fill in the earring. I don't know if I want it to be black. I think I'm going to make it a different colour so um, if you ever want to change the colour using that box just double click on the square and it'll take you to the colour palette I'm not sure if I mentioned that before but yeah you can that way you can feel free to choose your colours and then same thing using the eyedropper tool to pick it again and it just makes things a lot quicker actually so that all looks good to me I'm happy with that and now I want to work on the background actually I'm going to make her shadow so now I'm going to add a new layer and this is going to be underneath everything else um so let's make it a red yeah and because it's underneath everything else so it's n that little bit that i've drawn that looks like it's on top of her hair is not going to be seen because her whole body her hair her skin her ears is going to be on top of it which is the beauty about the layers so honestly once you understand the trick of the layers you will be able to manipulate and create easy illustrations and do things a lot quicker so literally the same thing here again and I'm gonna work back and do the same thing for that hip, stomach, leg area as well. So as you can see, it is there in the layer, layer 17, which is just gonna be above layer one. And now what we can do is we can hide that layer that we use as a reference to draw from. So we remove the background completely and it looks great to me. And um, what I think I want to do actually, I just want to see what it would look like with a plain background. So remember, once you finish your illustration, you can play around with it. Do whatever you want with it. Feel free, honestly. That's the beauty of it. It's your own creation. So now just use it as a time to experiment. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a background. So I'm going to use that rectangular tool, the square tool but what it's called but I'm gonna drag that down and what I realized actually is that that's on the same layer as the shadows so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna make a new layer on top of that so that when I want to use the eye tool to remove it I'm not removing them both and there you have it your own illustration I hope this video has been useful for you guys um just a tip that it's all about practice and practice and practice that's how I was able to sort of do this as well and just get into grips with the layers. I know that it can be really tricky, but once you understand your layers and try and do a layer and have a layer for the key areas of your drawing, it allows you to just play around and manipulate things a lot easier on your end. So that has been um, Adobe Illustrator with Stacey. Anyway, until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe.